evening of our 40th season of the Frederick County Public Schools Academic Tournament. My name is Eric Reichel. I will be your moderator tonight. And before we start, I would like to thank Beth Strakonsky and her husband, Frank, and Kelly Meissner, because they are the ones that are putting this all together in this brilliant technological marvel that we call the Academic Tournament. I'm sure I'm jinxing ourselves here, but okay. So we're going to start off with, well, we have match one tonight is Brunswick High School, Catoctin High School, and TJ High School. We're going to start with Brunswick High School first. So ladies and gentlemen, could you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? My name is Mason Leffler. I'm Jacob Winter. I'm Caleb Schallenbarger. I'm Angela Miller. I'm the captain for this round, and I'd like to thank our coaches, Senor and Mr. Kelly. They are awesome guys indeed. All right, then. So, Angela, you're the captain. Would you please pick packet A, B, or X, please? A, please. A, did you say? Yes. A, it is. These questions are for Brunswick High School. Round one, grab bag, six questions, one up for a right answer, no points deducted for a wrong answer. All right, we look ready to rock. Here we go. Question one, name the capital of Texas. Uh, you guys agree that? Austin, yeah. Austin. That is correct. Question two. Heinrich Himmler was head of both the SS guards and the secret police. What was the name of the Nazi secret police? Would you guys say that's the Gestapo? Yeah. yeah. I Gestapo. That is correct. Question three. He ruined his father's brewery, squandered his inheritance, and failed as a tax collector. Name this patriot who partly organized the Boston Tea Party and signed the Declaration of Independence. Oh, uh, was that, do you guys think that was Adams? Um, Samuel, Samuel Adams. Adams. Samuel Adams, yeah, yeah. Samuel Adams? That is correct, good. I'd like to see that light bulb over your head there, Mason, for sure. Yes, a brewery, I hope that's what gave it to you. Yeah. Question four, yeah, good. And it's, it's, that's the way the brain works for sure. Question four, what is the symbol for radon on the periodic table? Do you guys think that is it? Do you guys think it's? I want to say R D. I was going to say R D, but I wasn't sure. I because I think R A is radium. Yeah, it's radium. Yeah. R D. I'm sorry. It's R N. R N. Question five. This famous children's writer introduced us to Peter Rabbit. Name her. Would you guys say that's Potter? Yeah, Potter. Potter. Beatrix Potter, correct. And question six. In fantasy football, entering the 2020 season, there were two tight ends who were the highest rated of all the tight ends. One plays for the San Francisco 49ers and one plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. Name one of them. Kittle. Uh, George Kittle of the 49ers. Mm -hmm. Defer. Yeah. Uh, George Kittle. Kittle from the 49ers is correct. Travis Kelsey is the one I was thinking you'd get because Kelsey had a great season and Kittle did not, but you got it correct. That completes round one. <clears throat> Mason, you staying on? Yeah, I'm in this round. All right, oh, then we've got four. Round two, math round. Four questions, two of them are math. Reminder, in the math questions, you get 30 seconds. Ms. Meisner will prompt you with five seconds left. One up for a correct answer, one off for an incorrect answer. So it certainly does not hurt you to guess. Okay, all right, would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? I'm Elijah Schollenbarger. I'm Paige Trindell. I'm Nate Swires. I'm the captain, and I would like to thank all our teammates who studied really hard in preparation for the matches. Excellent. And Mason's back. Very good, Nate. Okay, round two. Here we go. Question one, math. Use the following equations of two lines to determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. 3x plus y equals 5. Uh, and 4 plus 3y equals x. Begin time. Uh, would you guys agree that they're uh, perpendicular? Yeah. Sure. Perpendicular. That is correct. Question two. This artistic and intellectual movement of intense emotion, partly a revolt against the rigid arist 
aristocratic norms of the Age of Enlightenment is most notably embodied in the works of William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Name it. Do you guys think that's romanticism? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Romanticism? That is correct. I'm going to keep asking questions about the romantics, and you're going to either learn them or get them wrong, one or the other. Correct. Question three. Math. For the following set of data, calculate the mid-range. Three, seven, 11, nine, 18, five, two, six. Begin time. Five seconds. Answer, please. Um, anyone have anything? No, I don't have anything. Time, no response. The answer answer was 10. Okay. And question four. The only national park in an urban area is also the smallest national park. It is called Hot Springs and is located in what southern U.S. state? Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, do, do any of you know? If you don't, let's just guess Alabama. Alabama. I'm sorry, it's incorrect. It's Arkansas. Or Hot Springs, Arkansas. I was hoping Hot Springs would give it to you. That completes round two. There's four. All right. You criminal types ready to rumble here? Notorious criminals. Okay, this was a fun category to write. I, I didn't know that much about these notorious criminals, but now I do. So hopefully you do too. Um, let's, uh, we're going to have three questions. Some of them are from fictional notorious criminals, some from real life notorious criminals. Uh, would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain on this round? Uh, I'm Ethan Hopko. I'm Andrew Ricketts. I'm Maggie Williams. I'm Harrison Leffler. I'm the captain of this round. And I'd like to thank Random Trivia Books for helping us prepare for our matches. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, I can use a few of those. All right, Notorious Criminals, here we go. They're long. Listen to the whole thing and see what you can do. All right, question one. This criminal started crime young, leading a neighborhood gang called the Dirty Dozen that stole coal from railroad cars. At age 20, he robbed a grocer, got caught, and was sent to jail. After nine years in prison, he was paroled and quickly turned to robbing banks. He was so successful, and many were so fed up with the depression and bank failures, that he became a folk hero and underwent plastic surgery to alter his appearance. He was declared public enemy number one in June 1934, and in July, while walking out of a movie theater, he was killed by federal agents, named this criminal. Would everyone agree it's Capone? Yeah. Sure. Ethan? Sure. Capone? I'm sorry, it's John Dillinger. Dillinger. <laughs> Question two. This man was an IT systems expert working for the U.S. National Security Agency when he traveled to Hong Kong. He provided three journalists with thousands of top secret documents about U.S. intelligence agencies' surveillance of American citizens. He considered himself a whistleblower but the U.S. government considered him a traitor and canceled his passport. He remains in Russia today with two counts of the Espionage Act of 1917 pending against him. Name this man. It's Snowden. Anyone on the... Name anyone else? I don't... Uh, yeah, let's go with that. I defer. You did? Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden is correct. Question three. There are a lot of memorable criminals on the television show The Wire, including Omar Little, Marlo Stanfield, and Avon Barksdale. But the character ranked as the most memorable on the show was this man, played by Idris Elba, who was the right-hand man of Avon and who ran his criminal business when Avon was in jail. Name this criminal who attempts to legitimize his organization, 
takes economics classes in college and who was, uh, spoiler alert, who was shot to death by Omar and brother Muzon in the third season of the series. Does anybody know this one? <laughs> I do not know that. No. I have no idea. Just guess a name. <laughs> Time. No guess? No. Stringer Bell, and it hurts me that you didn't know that one because The Wire is an amazing show. Please put that on your must-watch list. That completes round three. And we're back with four. All right, here we go for round four. Seven questions on a variety of topics. Oh, okay. Wait, one sec, one sec, please. Uh, Drew, I think Rebecca is here now. Could you please have Rebecca join? She was she was following a car accident, so they were delayed. Well, I'm glad she's here now. And I'm glad she's okay. Thank you. What do you guys think? School on Monday? Hopefully not. Oh, come on. Give me a couple of takes. It depends. Takes. Oh, so. Here's Rebecca. It usually it's only like two inches where I live. Yeah, well, I'm hoping for none. But that's just me. And there she is. Excellent. Okay. Rebecca, you ready to, to ready to rock and roll here for questions round four? I'm glad you're here. Well, let's make sure it's working. Thumbs up. All right, let's introduce ourselves for round four and tell me who the captain is for this round. And just reintroduce yourselves so everybody can see your lovely face and name one more time. I'm I Angela Miller. I'm Rebecca. Oh. All at once. Excellent. A choral reading. <laughs> Great. All right. And I'm Mason Leffler, and I'm the captain of this round. And I'd like to thank our principal, Mr. Dillman, for coming today. That's nice, Mr. Dillman, to be here for sure. Excellent. Okay. All right. We're all ready to rumble then. Here we go. Question number one. This planet rotates in a way that is unique in the solar system, rotating three times on its axis for every two revolutions it makes around the sun. What is this planet? with the smallest axis tilt in the solar system. Do you guys know it? I'm thinking it's one I'm of thinking, the outer ones, I think. Are you sure? I was thinking like Mercury, but. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You guys I thought Mercury, too. Mercury? Wait, okay, go with yep, that. It is Mercury. Good. And that's good teamwork there. Sorting all out in seven seconds, Mercury. That's correct. Question two. He has been called the most spiritual of artists, and he has also been called mad and insane. Today, he is considered a major prophet of the Romantic movement and the revolt against the mechanical tyranny of the modern world. He was an engraver, and his poetry was often accompanied with his artwork. Name this poet who wrote songs of innocence and songs of experience. It's a U2. Or, well, Bono specifically, if you're talking. It's, oh, wait, no, a, shoot, I'm thinking poet. of the album. Never mind, never mind. Wait, so he was Spanish. Oh. Angela, do you know him? Just heard, we him? just heard about him. Fine. Oh. Response, please? No response. Uh, Blake, William Blake. Tremendous. No, never mind. Different person. <laughs> Worth a shot. Question three. This organization was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1917 and 1944 as a tribute to its humanitarian activities during the two world wars. Name this organization that provides emergency assistance and disaster relief. Would you guys say- Do you guys think that would be Red Cross? Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. The Red Cross. Okay. That's correct. Question four. What city is located on both the continents of Asia and Europe? The city spreads out over two sides of the Bosporus. Name the city in Turkey. Would you guys agree that's Istanbul? Mm -hmm. Istanbul. They're all shaking their heads vigorously. Yes, correct. Question five. With their 17th NBA championship in 2020, this team tied the Boston Celtics for most championships ever in the league. Name this famous West Coast team. 
Do you, you guys, guys think, think that's, that's the, the Lakers? Yeah, I was going to say. The Lakers? Yep, they won in last year. Correct. Question six. The largest bill of any bird belongs to this water bird that has a long beak and a large throat used for catching prey and draining water from the scooped up contents before swallowing. Name this bird. You guys, you guys think that's that? You can. I was thinking it was a pelican. Oh, it's something like pelican. Um, yeah, pelican. Pelican, yeah. Sorry. Pelican? Pelican? That's correct. Yeah, good. And question seven. The Peloponnesian War was fought between Athens and which other ancient Greek state? Would you guys agree that's Sparta? Sparta? Yeah. Sparta is correct. That completes the Master Blend of High School. Well played, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, contestants next. That was smooth and easy. Yeah. Even with Murky getting there a little bit late. Excellent. Coach Young, we're ready for you. What'd you say? Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Ryan, to mention, I saw one of your tennis teams in the best of the boys' tennis. Yes, yeah, exciting. My sons were, were thrilled that uh, said, still making headlines all these years later. <laughs> Good attitude. Right. That was fun. Those were fun years of my life, for sure, when I was coaching my boys. That was really cool. I see right. one, two, three. Coach Young, do we have your team here? Oh, there we go. There's three and there's four. All right. Welcome, Catoctin High School, to the fourth night of our 40th year of the academic tournament. And now we've got five people on. So before I go further, one person on who shouldn't be on. Summer. Turn your new camera, camera off. Camera mic off. There we go. Okay. All right. Round one is a grab bag round. Six questions on a variety of topics. One up for a correct answer. No points off for a wrong answer. Uh, let's start with introductions, please. Would you introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? I'm My Joe name. Hawkins, and I'll be the captain in this round. My name is Rafaela Smaldone. I'm Catherine Moore. I'm Natalie Boshai. Okay. Then let's go here on round one. And oh, we need to choose. Joe, please pick packet B or packet X. Let's go with B. B. X is last. That never happens, but it is this time. You guys are thinking outside the box. I like that. OK, round one, question one. Name the capital of New Jersey. Trenton. Yeah, right. Trenton. Trenton. Yeah, Trenton, final answer. <laughs> the look of relief on Joe's face. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> question two. After World War II started in Europe, this U.S. president made an announcement regarding the United States' position of neutrality. Name the U.S. president. FDR. FDR. FDR, FDR final answer. That is correct, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Question three. This man died with his wife for their work with radioactive materials, which won them both the Nobel Prize. Name this famous scientist. I it's don't have his husband, right? Any idea? Einstein? Wait, Joe, who'd you say? I said Movikyoi's husband, but I don't know his first name. What's I his last name? Kyoi. Okay, so that. Yeah. Kyoi, final answer. That is correct. You don't need the first name. Just the last <laughs> name. I didn't give you the first name, the last name, then you would have needed it. But yeah, Pierre is his first name, French name. Pierre Curie and Marie. Question four. In fantasy football, Entering the 2020 season, there were two wide receivers who were the highest rated of all the receivers. One place for New Orleans and one place for the Green Bay Packers. Name either one of them. New Orleans receivers. I, I have no idea. Does anybody have a guess? We have in this household, and I could not tell you their names. Mine. No guess? N yeah, no response. Okay, Michael Thomas was the receiver for the New Orleans who didn't do very well. Devontae Adams, 
Dante Fass is his name. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. That, sports is tough. Question five. What is the symbol for Krypton on the periodic table? It's K-R. K-R, right? K-R, yeah. Final yeah. answer, K-R. Yes, you all know the periodic table. You just don't know the NFL receivers. I'd rather you know the periodic table, honestly. So, Question six. This poetry lacks rhythm or rhyme. What kind of verse is it called? Free verse? Yeah. Final answer, Seven. free verse. It's free. That's right. It's free. You got it. Good job, Rafi. Thank goodness. Good teamwork. <laughs> two, three, and there's four. All right, round two, math round, four questions. The two math questions, a reminder, you have 30 seconds to respond at uh, 25 seconds. Ms. Meisner will give you a prompt. And remember, one up for right answer, but one down for a wrong answer, so take your best guess if you're not sure. All right, let's start with introductions, please, and then tell me who the captain is for this round. My name is Ava Mays, and I'll be the captain. My name is Carson Keller. I'm Jacob Hartness. And I'm Nick Miller. All right, then. We are ready to go here. Math. And question one is math. Use the following equations of two lines to determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. 2y minus 4x equals 4. 3 minus x equals 2y. Begin time. They're perpendicular. Perpendicular, yeah. Opposite. Final answer, perpendicular. That is correct. Question two. This famous man was trained in anatomy by Andrea del Veraccio. He used this knowledge in his artwork to sketch skeletal structures, muscles, and organs of humans and other vertebrae he dissected. He is often regarded as the most diversely talented person to ever live. He also produced some of the most famous paintings in the world. Name him. Isn't it Leonardo da Vinci? I don't have a better guess. So final answer, Da Vinci. Yeah, yeah. A tremendously amazing person for sure. Right? Question three, math. For the following set of data, calculate the harmonic mean. One sixth, one half, one third, one fifth. Begin time. Five seconds remaining. Three tenths is the actual mean, but does anyone have the harmonic mean? Final answer, three tenths. It's always worth a guess for sure. It's, it's one fourth. One fourth. Question four. This influential figure in jazz music was nicknamed Satchmo. Name the musician who shares his last name with the first man to set foot on the moon. Armstrong. Yeah. Louise yeah. Armstrong? Yeah. Final answer, Armstrong. Louis Armstrong is correct, and that completes round two. Okay, now we've got the shifty criminal types on, right? Kidding, kidding. No, we're not. But you're studying up on notorious criminals, correct? Okay, that's round three. I pre announced category notorious criminals, some fictional, some non fictional. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. Hi, I'm Natalie Boche, and I will be the captain this round. I'm Summer Glauzen. I'm Catherine Moore. And I'm Joe Hawkins. All right, here we go then. Notorious criminals. These are kind of long questions, so listen to the whole thing and see what you can do. Question one. This man was born in Sicily in 1897, and according to the Mob Museum, he did more to create the modern American mafia than any other man. He was a member of the Five Points Gang in Manhattan as a youth. He and the other young Turks assassinated Joe the Boss Masseria in 1931 and took over what would become the Genovese crime family. 
He established and hosted national meetings of the mob, which drew attention from New York prosecutor Thomas Dewey. And in 1936, he was arrested and sentenced to 30 to 50 years in state prison. Name this notorious criminal. Anyone? I thought you would know that. <laughs> My extent of the mob does not go that far back. <laughs> Time. No, no response. Charles Lucky Luciano. Question two. This man was tried and imprisoned for murder in Mexico in 1993, but in 2001, he broke out of prison, most believe while on the bottom of a laundry cart, and spent the next 13 years evading the law. Caught in 2014, he escaped again within a year and a half through a sophisticated tunnel in his prison cell. Finally caught in 2016, he stood trial in New York City and was sentenced to life in prison, which he will spend in administrative maximum facility in Colorado, we hope. Name this brutal Mexican cartel leader who smuggled more than $12 billion worth of drugs. Um, is it El Chapo? That's what I was thinking. Catherine or Joe? I think he got... No, he's not the one who got killed. I think it's El Chapo, El Chapo. right? Mm -hmm. El Chapo, final answer. That is correct. Or Joaquin Guzman Loria, but El Chapo is what he's mostly known by. So that's correct. <clears throat> Question three. This television series boasts a rogue gallery of criminals with such amazing names as Lorne Malvo, Lester Nygaard, Nikki Swango, VM Barga, Moretta Mayflower, Josto Fada, and my favorite, Hansi Dent. Name this show, which in four seasons has taken place in Minnesota, North Dakota, and Kansas City, and which is based on a 1996 film. Does anyone have any idea? No, no idea. No. <laughs> No. No guess, Nelly. No guess. No fi final answer. No response. Okay. Uh, Fargo. Fargo is this amazing series that you must watch. That completes round three. One, two, three, and there's four. Okay. Round four. Seven questions on a variety of topics. One up for right answer, one off for wrong answer. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. I'm Ava Mays and I'll be the captain. Ava? I'm Nick Miller. My I'm name Raphael is Joe Hawkins. Sorry. I'm <laughs> Rafaela Smaldone. I'm amazed that we get it right anytime. So well done. All right, here we go then. Round uh, four. Are we all set? Question number one. This is a terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere and the largest volcano and highest known mountain of any planet in the solar system. What is this planet site of Olympus Mons? I think it's Mars. Yeah. Final answer, Mars. That is correct. Question two. He was called by William Caxton, England's first printer, the worshipful father and first founder and embellisher of ornate eloquence in our English. He took as models poems from French and Italian sources to feel his way towards native English poetry. He wrote Troilus and Cressida before his masterpiece, The Canterbury Tales. Name him. Chaucer. Chaucer. Final answer, Chaucer. Oh, I hear you said that with such conviction, Raffaello. That's right, Chaucer. Question, uh, Jeffrey Chaucer. Question three. There were seven wonders of the ancient world. One of them, the Hanging Gardens, was found in what city? It's Babylon. Final answer, Babylon. Yep. Question four. Greenland was a colony of which country until 1981? This country's flag is a red background with a white, slightly off-center cross. Name the country. Pretty sure it's Denmark. Final answer, Denmark. That is correct. Question five. Both Daniel LaRussa and Mr. Miyagi, Miyagi, excuse me, he would he would be angry if I got that wrong. Mr. Miyagi were central characters in this 1984 film that spawned many sequels and a television show. Name the film. It's The Karate Kid. The Karate Kid. Final answer, The Karate Kid. Okay, wax on, wax off, for sure, yes. Question six. A special edition of this 1953 novel came with an asbestos cover. Name this dispo, dis, dis let me try that one more time. Name this dystopian novel by Ray Bradbury. For, uh, Fahrenheit 451? Yeah. Final answer, Fahrenheit 451. Asbestos cover, right? Yeah. Question seven. The ancient city of Rome was built on how many hills? 
I think it's seven. Seven. Final answer is seven. That is correct. I think you got them all. Did you not? Excellent playing round uh, four. Well done. Good talk to All right, I've sent the call for TJ. How many of Yeah. It's only five o'clock and we're already two thirds of the way through. Mm -hmm. I might have some miso soup with my sushi tonight. <laughs> Styling. Mr. Atwell, are we here and ready to begin? I believe so. Ben, right. and Ariana, and Ray, round one. Jared, you changed your. Uh, I like. I like your. The Patriots thing is cool, but I like the one sketch of you was cooler. So. Yeah, but it, I noticed on one of the videos it just kept going back to that, even though I was muted, and I was like, I don't like my face copied up every two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Ms. Meiser <laughs> and I were talking about that. That that that's too too be figured out as we go along. Right. That's okay. All right. So it looks like TJ's ready to, to roll. Here we go. Uh, round one of the uh, fourth night of our 40th year. Welcome to the uh, academic tournament, uh, TJ High School. Would you please introduce yourselves and then tell me who will be the captain in this round? Hello, my name is uh, Ben Marshall, and I'll be the captain this round. Uh, I'm Ariana Schwartz. I'm Naman Johnny. And I'm Ray Wong. Here we go, then. Uh, you are left with packet X. First time I can ever remember X making it all the way to the end. Here we go. Question number one. Name the capital of Connecticut. Anyone know? Hartford? Yeah, it sounds right. All right. Uh, final answer, Hartford. Yeah, say it with authority. Hartford, yes. Hartford. There you go. Right, good. Definitely. Question number two. What is the name of the famous aerial battle that occurred over the skies of London during World War II? Uh, battle of Britain, right? Yeah, Battle of Britain. All right, final answer, Battle of Britain. That is correct. Question three. What is the symbol for zirconium on the periodic table? Um, my guess would be ZR. Does anyone know, though? That's, yes. Uh, I'm what is it, Ray? Sorry. Time. All right, final answer, ZR. That is correct, good. Oh. Question five. The Chronicles of Narnia is an allegorical fantasy series in a struggle between good and evil by this Irish author and scholar. Name him. I do not know this, anyone else? I don't know. Uh, no response. Okay, uh, C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis is the writer. And question number six. This question requires a two-part answer. In fantasy football, entering the 2020 season, there were two quarterbacks who were the highest rated of all the quarterbacks. One plays for the Baltimore Ravens and one plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. Name both of them. Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. All right, final answer. Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. Yes, that is correct. I, I had the choice of either one of them, and I picked Lamar Jackson. That was a mistake. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes had a great year, but you got that correct, and that completes round one. Good job, Don. Hey, good job, guys. Uh, Ray, Colin, Ariana, and Jeremiah, round two. And two, three, four. There we go. Okay, round two, a math round. Four questions. On the two math questions, a reminder, you get 30 seconds. After 25 seconds, Ms. Meisner will prompt you. And remember, it's one off or wrong answer, so take a guess if you're not sure. Okay, would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who's the captain in this round? My name is Ray Wong, and I will be captain. My name's Colin Jones. I'm Jeremiah Taylor. Um, I'm Ariana Schwartz. Sorry. Very good. Okay, round two is a math round, and the first question is a math question. Use the following equations of two lines to determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. 4x plus 2y equals 7. 
2y equals 3 minus 4x. Begin time. Uh, yeah, I'd yeah. say it's parallel. Parallel. Uh, parallel. That is correct. Question two. Which philosopher is famed for saying, I think, therefore, I am? Descartes. Final answer, Descartes. Descartes. Correct. Question three. Math. For the following set of data, calculate the geometric mean. 75, 90, 15, 8. Begin time. I got a uh, five seconds remaining. I got nothing right. Uh, final answer is 30. Excellent. Right under the gun. Nice job, right? Question number four. For humans, this serves as a protective barrier, a way to sense the world, and a layer that keeps nutrients and water inside the body. Four types of cells make up this largest organ of the integumentary system. Name it. The skin. Yeah. Final answer, skin. That is correct, and that completes round two. Great job, guys. Ben, Elliot, Riley. Oh, Riley's not here, I don't think. Um, okay, Ben, Elliot, Jeremiah, and uh, Ariana. Ariana, can you jump in on, on this one? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Round three, notorious criminals. Remember, they can be from a fictional work, movie, book, uh, TV show, or uh, nonfiction. Okay, or would you please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round? My name is Ben Marshall, and I'll be the captain in this round. My name is Elliot Anderson. I'm Jeremiah Taylor again. I'm Ariana Schwartz. Thank you for introducing yourselves again. Okay, these questions are kind of long, so listen carefully and see if we can get them. Question number one. Around 1920, this man joined Johnny Torrio in Chicago and became a lieutenant in the Colosimo mob. He took over for Torrio in 1925 and eliminated rival gangs, which culminated in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929. He was in and out of jail for a few years after being held for tax evasion and sentenced to 11 years in federal prison. Name this notorious criminal. Al Capone, right? Capone, yeah, yeah. All right, final answer, Capone. That is correct. Question two. At the peak of his career, this man and his associates controlled about 80% of the global cocaine market which makes him the wealthiest criminal in history. His estimated worth was $30 billion in the early 1990s. Name this man who was the head of the Medellin cartel, a Colombian criminal who was the world's most powerful drug trafficker in the 1980s and early 90s. Escobar, right? Yeah, all right, final answer, Escobar. That is correct. And question three. This question requires a two-part answer. Many television shows have memorable criminals, but one show had two villains, considered by many to be two of the greatest villains ever in fiction. One of them is a Chilean drug lord who distributed his drugs by shrewdly posing as a businessman with many chicken franchises. The other criminal started as a high school teacher before eventually becoming the black hat wearing Heisenberg. Name these two extraordinary villains from the same television show. Bad, but I don't know the people. Wait, what is it, Elliot? Sorry. Bad, but I don't know the people. Yeah, no, I've never seen it. Uh, anyone else? Walter White. Walter White's one. So maybe. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know the other. All right. Um, Final answer, uh, Walter White. Uh, well, Walter White, you got uh, Heisenberg, of course, the chemistry teacher, and Gus Fring, Giancarlo Esposito, uh, amazing, wonderful portrayal of a scary, scary guy. Los Palos Hermanos, right? That completes round three. Okay, great job, guys. Uh, Ray, Colin, Naman, Elliot. 
One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. Round four, seven questions on a variety of topics. Please introduce yourselves and tell me who will be the captain in this round. My name is Ray Wong, and I'll be the captain for this round. I'm Elliot Anderson. I'm Numan Johnny. Sorry. I'm Colin Jones. All right, then. Here we go. Round four. Question one. This planet has experienced a runaway greenhouse effect that has caused the surface temperature to rise to over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. What is this planet with an atmosphere of roughly 96% carbon dioxide? It's Venus. Venus, yeah. Venus, yeah. Final answer, Venus. That is correct. Question two. This man is known as the greatest writer of the 17th century and is one of the giants of literature. He was a Puritan all his life and studied the Bible extensively. He became blind later in life and completed his biblical epic, Paradise Lost, in 1667. Name him. Paradise Lost. Uh, I know this guy. I know him. It's not Dante. Is it Dante? No. That's not no, it's not Dante. It's, I know it. I'm going to be so frustrated when I get thrown. No, I don't know. Yep. No guess? Time? No response. Uh, John Milton, Elliot. Uh, yes, uh, Dante, the divine comedy, but Milton is Paradise Lost. Yep, you're in the same ballpark for sure. Question three. Who became the first man to fly solo and nonstop across the Atlantic in 1927? Lindbergh? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We'll Final answer, Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh, that is correct. Question four. This question requires a two-part answer. Which two countries share the longest border in the world, which is over 5,525 miles long? Canada. It's the longest border. Canada and USA. Uh, Canada and USA. Yeah, yeah. We'll go with Canada and USA. Yeah, Canada and USA is longest right. border. Final answer, Canada and the USA. It is Canada and USA. Correct. It's question five. <clears throat> Fly, you fools. So said this famous wizard as he was being dragged down by the Balrog in the Fellowship of the Ring. Name this wizard. Gandalf the Grey. Yeah, sounds all right. Anyone else? All right. Uh, final answer, Gandalf. Gandalf the Grey, when it happened, and later he's Gandalf the Wet, of course, which you knew. That is correct. One of those lines where you hope they get it right in the movie and they just nailed it. Beautiful. Question number six. This question requires a two-part answer. In 1926, Route 66 was completed between what two U.S. cities, one in the West and one in the Midwest? Ooh, I feel like it's St. Louis, maybe, and then it's like L.A. or something. I don't know. It's not L.A. It's, it's like the, it's the pier. I don't know. I think I'm L.A. or San uh, okay. St. Louis and L.A. or maybe San Francisco? Time. Uh, final answer, St. Louis and uh, Los Angeles. It's Los Angeles, but it's Chicago, a little further north oh. for the Midwest. Right. Okay. And question okay. seven. Who became the 36th president of the United States in 1963 after the 35th president was assassinated? Johnson. Johnson. That's Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. Uh, final answer, Johnson. More specific, please. Uh, Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson. Johnson. There are two Johnsons, so we had to make sure that that's correct, and that completes the match for Governor Thomas Johnson. Well done, Michael. Michael. We're going to have to ask, um, if I could have everybody's attention, we have a discrepancy in round one. We think only five questions were read. Okay. Uh, in this first first match here? Yeah, in the TJ match round one, so. Oh, yes, I missed question three. Okay, so Mr. Atwell, if you could bring your round one people back on for that final question. Okay, that's Ben, Naman, Ariana, and Ray. Okay, round, ready for round one? No need to introduce, but who's the captain here? Uh, I am. Joe? Or no, or, uh, Ben, right? Ben. Okay, so, yes. right, here's question three. Sorry about that. She was the mother of England's King Edward VI. She was also the third wife of King Henry VIII. Name her. Wasn't it? There was one like Mary, right? Anyone? Anyone know? I don't know. Um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. 
Was there an Elizabeth? Do you marry an Elizabeth? I'm, I'm not sure. Response, please. Okay. Uh, final re what is it? All right. Final response, uh, Mary. I'm sorry. It's Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour. Sorry about missing that question, but I'm glad you got it in. Thank you, Beth. Okay. Let me bring everybody back. Okay. So we can stay here then, I guess. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. One of these nights we're going to have a tie. Bound to happen. We had one in week one. Did we? Mm -hmm. we yeah. And I'd like to point out it's still sunny out at the end. Yes. Of Good March. point. Yeah. Good point. Excited. There's hope. All right. We all here? All right, everyone. Thank you and congratulations on finishing week four. In third place, we had Brunswick with nine points. In second place, we had Thomas Johnson with 12 points. And Catoctin wins this week with 13 points. Excellent. Congratulations. See you next week. Well played, everybody.